stirring tones of America the beautiful from sea to shining sea. We celebrate the glory, the beauty, and the wonder of this land that God has indeed blessed as God blesses each and every land. As we gather here this morning, we gather here rejoicing in our freedom, rejoicing in this day, rejoicing in our God. May the Lord be with you. Would you please stand and join me in the call to worship? Christ calls us to worship in this holy place. Christ calls us to learn what he can teach. Christ calls us to share bread and wine at the table. Let us worship God together. Let us pray. God, you are the great Jehovah. You are the first and you are the last. You are the one who called us into being and who gives us life each and every day. We thank you, God, for the gift of life and liberty, for the gift of living in a country resplendent in its beauty and its wonder. Thank you, God, that from sea to shining sea, your name is praised. And may your name be praised throughout all of your earth this day, for you are God of all. You are the creator and redeemer of each and every one, and you are the God who has called us to this place, and to you we offer our praise and our worship, giving thanks for what has been, asking your blessings upon us now, and asking your wisdom and guidance for our future. So, God, as we gather, meet with us, we pray, and bless us with your presence your peace, and your love. And all of God's people said, Amen. please be seated. <clears throat> Good morning. And a very warm welcome into the house of God, and especially warm welcome is extended to you this morning. If you are visiting with us, we want you to know that you are most welcome here. We invite you to sign the blue visitor's pads, which are at the end of the pew, and I'm sure during worship they will be passed along the pew. 
Also, after morning worship this morning, there will be further fellowship through in Earman Hall, which is through these doors here. Um, if those who are traveling to Cuba could please remember that also after morning worship, there will be a meeting of all who are traveling, and that meeting will take place in the chapel immediately after morning worship. You'll notice that there are a number of other announcements in the bulletin. Could I ask um, that you look at the back page? Uh, please pray for our youth. We have 11 young people, um, along with Ben, Ben Neal up the stairs, and myself, who are traveling to Chattanooga um, in Tennessee. We're leaving at 5 o'clock next mo Sunday, mo Monday morning, wishful thinking. Next Sunday morning at 5 o'clock, sharp, um, which means I will not be here, but Pastor Steve will be leading worship. Please um, keep our young people in, in your prayers. I think it's wonderful to be sending off 11 young people to do mission work in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So please pray for them and definitely for Ben and myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, also, there's an additional insert. Many of you are aware of um, the tiny homes for veterans that have been built within our community in, in Yout Street. Um, we are wanting to try and do a shower um, to provide things for uh, these tiny homes. There will be more information uh, in the coming weeks, but please look at this, um, see if you're able to contribute in any way as we remember and honor those who have served this country and who will now reside in these tiny veterans' homes. Um, so please take a look at this at your leisure, and if you can help, please do. And Bruce, would you like to come and say something? Good morning. On Tuesday, we run the parking lot, and it fills up rather quickly. So this is an opportunity for you, those of you that can't get up early uh, to reserve a parking spot. So if you'll see me in Ehrman Hall, We'll save you a spot. I already have two confirmed, uh, but with a very generous donation to the youth for their trip, we'll be glad to save you a spot. Thank you. Christ calls us to worship in this holy place so that we may find rest for weary souls and comfort for heavy hearts. Christ also calls us to learn what he can teach so we can find direction for our lives. And Christ also calls us here to confess our sins, unburden our souls, so that we may once again know God's love and mercy and forgiveness. So please join me in reading our prayer of confession. Holy and merciful God, you are the creator of all life and the one who offers healing through forgiveness. We are surrounded by beauty, yet we often fail to look at it with wonder. We are symbols of hope, yet we often succumb to despair. We are blessed beyond measure, yet we often allow greed to shape our generosity. We are uncommonly free, yet we often bind ourselves to yesterday's failures. We are gifted and graced as a people of faith, yet we often fail to let our light shine. We are loved beyond measure, yet we often fail to pass on your love. In these moments of shared silence, encourage us to lay down our burdens release our fears, forgive our failures, reclaim our hopes, and align ourselves with your deep wisdom. Amen.
The Apostle Paul writes to the church at Rome and to the church here in Racine. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has passed away, and we now live in newness of life. Friends, hear the good news of the gospel. Please be seated. Thank you, family Pafra, for leading that so beautifully. Your mum will love to see it later. <laughs> Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks. It is amazing grace. It is amazing grace that we enjoy so many benefits in this life and blessings. It is amazing grace that we have life and health. It is amazing grace that, that we live in this beautiful land. It is amazing grace that you have come into our life and our living through your Son, Jesus Christ, and that you continue to offer amazing grace, loving us when we are unlovable, caring for us when we, God, don't care for others, and seeking us out when we wander and stray from the path, it is indeed amazing grace. So, God, grace us with your presence today. Grace us with a word spoken into our lives. Grace us every day of our lives, and help us to remember that you are indeed the giver of every good and perfect gift, and upon you, God, we depend for life and for living. Amen. You sound all excited, Liam, are you? I wish everyone was excited. So, um, I wanted to ask a question this morning of people of all ages, and it would be interesting to see um, if, if people of different ages answer different questions. I want you to tell me who you think is your favorite superhero. Think of the superheroes that you have known in your life. You know the superheroes that are on television and on the movies and in comics, etc. Who do you remember as an amazing superhero? Superman. Superman. Wonder Woman. Interestingly enough, that only came from women. <laughs> Taylor. Logan. You've got them. Taylor, give them a moment to think. The Flash. Wait a minute, we're going for The Flash first. Who's The Flash? <laughs> Is that like... Flash? The fastest man alive, okay. It's, so that's not Flash Gordon. Logan. Spider-Man, yeah. Who remembers Spider-Man? Nobody, apparently. <laughs> Spider-Man. So Fla Flash is a, a, the fastest man alive. So the Flash that I remember is Flash Gordon. <laughs> yeah, I remember Flash Gordon. So, so wait a minute, we need to go back to Mr. Brooke here. <laughs> the who? Green Hornet. Green Hornet. 
Aquaman. <laughs> Aquaman. <laughs> Who's Aquaman? <laughs> he delivers the water. He likes the water. Thank you, Steve, for pointing that out. So, okay. Aquaman, whoever that is, the Green Hornet. Oh, right, let's come back to the Green Hornet. Never heard of him or her or it. Really old, I thought that, yeah. <laughs> are, are you, wait a minute, are you talking about John or are you talking about... <laughs> oh, a crime fighter, okay, Green Hornet. Never heard of Green Hornet. Any other superhero? Ben. Batman. I thought Batman would be first, but no, Batman, yeah. Any other superheroes? Mary. Don't say Bud. <laughs> Mr. Rogers. He is a superhero, yeah. Who else? Mac. Who? The shadow. The shadow. The Lone Ranger. I, I know the Lone Ranger, the shadow. I've never heard of the shadow in my life. This is an education in and of itself. Taylor. The Black Panther. Yeah. Logan. Supergirl. Rachel. Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> Suffragette. There you go. A superhero. Yeah. There, there are lots and lots of superheroes. No one mentioned Captain America. <gasps> On the Sunday nearest July 4th, you didn't mention Captain America. I was thinking of superheroes. What are superheroes? What are they? They're there to protect us, yeah? Taylor. Oh my goodness, the Hulk, and oh, so there are just too many to mention. But these superheroes um, are people that are, are, are more than human, that they can do more than, than, than really is humanly possible, and we call them superheroes. They are amazing, they're wonderful. And sometimes, you know, I think we think that, that somehow we need to be superheroes. I got a little um, balloon this morning I am Wonder Woman. <laughs> I hate to tell you, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, hands up, ladies, do you ever feel that you need to be Wonder Woman? That you're trying to do everything for everybody all of the time. And it's not just women. Sometimes there are men that think they're what? This is your cue. Just talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> so we have Wonder Woman. <laughs> I don't know whether it's for Superman or Steve. <laughs> <laughs> right, you can sit down now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whether we're, we're a boy or a girl, a man or a woman, sometimes we feel that we need to be a superhero. We need to be Superman, do everything. We need to be Wonder Woman, do everything. Be able to cope with everything. Be able to cope with everything that life throws at us. And you know, boys and girls, grown-ups, we're not called to be superheroes. We don't need to be Superman. We don't need to be Wonder Woman. We don't need to do everything on our own. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I'm going to give you rest. Superheroes in comics and cartoons and in the movies are all good and well, but we're not called to be superheroes or Wonder Woman or Superman or Supergirl or Bat Boy or any of these things. What we're called to do is to lean on Jesus, who says, come to me. You don't need to do everything on your own. Hands up if you sometimes feel you need to do everything on your own. Yeah, I think there are a few of us. We don't need to. 
here's this open invitation of Jesus saying, come to me. And then Jesus says this curious thing. He says, take my yoke upon you. A yoke is not a part of an egg. <laughs> the yoke is Jesus saying that we put a yoke on a beast of burden. A beast that's working. And the yoke is shared between two. And it's not that one does everything and the other one does nothing. It's saying, Jesus is saying, take my yoke upon you. Let me share the load with you. Isn't that a wonderful message for all of us? Let me share the load. Don't leave everything to me, he's saying. But come to me and let me share the load. You don't need to be Superman or Wonder Woman or any kind of superhero because life is hard. And Jesus offers us this invitation. Come, let me share the load. Let me walk with you. Let me be your companion. Let me be your friend. Amen. So I was thinking about America. America. And your celebrations this coming week of declaring your independence, celebrating your independence. Someone asked me last year, do you celebrate the 4th of July in, in Great Britain? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the way things are going, yes, we do. <laughs> but, you know, I was thinking about America, and America has offered home to me, and that's, that's a great joy in my life. But I was thinking, I read this thing about only in America. Only in America. So here are some thoughts about only in America. Only in America. Only in America do people park their cars that are worth tens of thousands of dollars. They park them in the driveway while they store up their useless junk in the garage. <laughs> Only in America. Only in America do you go into a bank and the vault doors are left open to the world but the pens are chained to the counter. <laughs> Only in America. Only in America can you drive up to an ATM machine, drive up to an ATM machine, and there's Braille <laughs> on the digits. <laughs> Think about it. Only in America. Only in America do you buy your hot dogs in packs of ten. But the buns are sold in packs of eight. <laughs> only in America. And so, it, you know, the list could go on, but it's not only in America, is it? Not at all. But this coming week, we could say only in America there's freedom, and yet that's not true, thankfully. It's not true that it's only in America that you have freedom. But thanks be to God, there is freedom in America. It's the land of the free, the home of the brave, the superheroes. Men and women who have stepped out in faith and in trust, pioneers who have gone before us. But America is not the only country that enjoys freedom, but this week we celebrate that freedom. You celebrate your freedom from my country. And just as an aside, King George, apparently wrote in his diary on the 4th of July, 1776, not much happened today. <laughs> it's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? <laughs> but, you know, I think of a lot did happen that day. Freedom. Freedom is so important. And the symbol of your freedom is that beautiful Statue of Liberty when you enter into New York Harbor. Twenty odd years ago when I first saw that Statue of Liberty, I have to confess to you that there were tears in my eyes. 
to see the Statue of Liberty standing over the gateway to the new world. And of course, what does it say in the bottom of the base of the Statue of Liberty? Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Yearning to breathe free. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. Perhaps we should revisit that just one more time. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. Do you know when I think about that, that phrase, it, it's strikingly similar to a phrase that we're going to read this morning that Jesus spoke. Come to me, all who are that tired and weary from carrying heavy loads. Come to me. It's a similar sentiment, isn't it, really, to the sentiment at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty? Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. It's an invitation. Come. Come to new life. Come to new beginnings. Come to freedom. And Emma Lazarus's statue, or Emma Lazarus's words at the foot of the statue are very similar to the words of Jesus Christ. Come. The door is open. Welcome. It's an invitation. I don't know about you, but life makes me tired and weary sometimes. And why do we sometimes forget this invitation of Jesus Christ to come? Come to me, all you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. What a wonderful, wonderful invitation. We who want to declare our independence rather than declaring our dependence on the one who offers us rest for our weary souls. Now, I know that some of you here support the Green Bay Packers. Is that right? <laughs> so I believe that there was a coach for the Green Bay Packers called Vince Lombardi. And there's a story told about Vince Lombardi because he, he did a lot for the Green Bay Packers. Is that right? Took them to a winning streak. Yes? But during that winning streak, the Green Bay Packers had a less than winning streak. And they were really, really struggling. And Vince Lombardi was furious with the players. And they knew that he was furious. So in the dressing room during halftime, during one game, all the players came into the dressing room and they were all standing with their heads hung low. And Vince Lombardi came in and he held a football aloft and showed it to all the players and said, Gentlemen, this is a football. There was silence until one hulking 320-pound player said, Coach, could you go over that one more time, please? <laughs> could you go over it one more time, Jesus? Just one more time. Remind us that you're there. Remind us that you're there and you invite us to come to you and find rest. We who are trying to do it on our own, we who are trying to be independent and self-sufficient, could you remind us just one more time your invitation to come? Let's read the Word of God. This is in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 11. I'm reading... <clears throat> from verse 25. It's on page 12 of the New Testament section of the Pew Bibles. Let us hear the Word of God. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will all things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Listen to these words of Jesus. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke 
is easy and my burden is light. Amen. And thanks be to God. I like your red, white, and blue, Liam. We all know the Charlie Brown cartoon with Linus. Linus is a little boy who always carries around his security blanket. It's very obvious. It's a blanket, and he holds on to it, and he sucks his thumb. He's holding on to what is secure in his life. And one day he says to Charlie Brown, he says, Charlie Brown is kind of frightening. Only this yard of fleece stands between me and a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Only this yard of fleece stands between me and a nervous breakdown. Life is hard, is it not? Life is extremely hard. For those who came to this country many years ago, life was hard and they were escaping. And they saw this Statue of Liberty shining as a beacon over New York Harbor with the invitational words, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. And even before that, Jesus Christ stands at the gateway of our lives and says, come to me, all of you for whom life is hard, all of you who have wearied, tired souls, come to me and you will find rest. My sermon title this morning is Declaring Our Dependence. We who like to think we are independent, we who relish our freedom, it's wonderful, but freedom is a double-edged sword because sometimes we're not as free as we think. We're not free from the need to prove ourselves. We're not always free from our guilty burdens. We're not always free from our past. We're not always free from trying to keep up with our neighbors. We're tired and we're weary and our souls need rest. And Jesus says, come to me. It's great to be independent. Of course it is. But sometimes to maintain that independence means that we are tired, trying to be self-made, self-sufficient. We're tired and we're weary, and we forget this invitation of Jesus Christ who says, come to me and learn from me. Learn from me. And what we learn from Jesus is, I am gentle and humble in heart. I think this society and the world could learn from Jesus Christ a little bit more gentleness and a little bit more humility. When I see the public discourse that's going on in this country and in other countries, I am horrified. There is no gentleness or humility. There is vile messages. What, are we, what example are we setting our young people about bullying? What example are we setting our young people about calling people derogatory names? It's a shocking example. Jesus says, come and learn from me. You're not in competition with each other, people. There's room in the heart and in the love of God for everyone. Stop putting each other down. Learn from me, says Jesus, to be gentle and humble. Remember that God has dealt graciously with each and every one of us, and isn't that how we should deal with one another? Not with hatred and bitterness and vile rhetoric, but with love, humility, and gentleness. But most of all, Jesus is saying, come to me, you who are struggling, and I suspect that most people here this morning are struggling in one way or another, struggling with life, struggling to keep up, struggling to understand what's happening in our world, struggling, struggling. And Jesus says, come to me. Declare to the world that you depend on me for strength, 
for meaning, for purpose, for direction, for an example. An example of how to deal with each other with lovingness and gentleness and humility. Come to me. In our world, it's very hurried and noisy and crowded. And we take time to come to the one who set out this table. Come to me, said Jesus. Come to me and let me assure you that when you come to me, you're not going to have to carry the load on your own. Come to me and know that the past that that haunts you is forgiven. Come to me and know that you don't need to prove yourself to anyone because I love you the way you are. Come to me, says Jesus. Out of a crowdy, crowded, busy, noisy, competitive world, come to me and let me come to you. Jesus says, come in to my life. Jesus invites every one of us to come in to the kitchen of his life and sit down and talk openly, knowing that we're heard. Jesus says, come in to the workplaces of my life and be co-creators with me in creating a new and better world where there is gentleness and humility and love and care and welcome for everyone. Jesus says, come in to the study of my life, that I may teach you wisdom, how to live wisely and well. Jesus says, come into the dining room of my life, that I may set out a feast for you, a feast that will promise forgiveness and peace and deep and lasting joy. Jesus says, come into the bedroom of my life and rest with me. Rest with me in the knowledge that I am going to be with you always. That you do not need to carry the loads of life on your own, however weary or tired you are. Come to me. My friends, come this day declaring your dependence on Jesus Christ, your dependence on him who is all things for your weary souls. Come to this table, taste and see and remember that Jesus Christ is with you always. Amen. I invite the ushers now to uplift the offering.
Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the light of your love that shines upon us day by day, for your wisdom and your guidance, for your calling us to be your co-creators of a new and better world. We give you thanks for your faithfulness to us down through the ages, and as tokens of our thanks, we lay before you our gifts, the gifts of our money, but the gifts also of ourselves, offered in your service. Help us, God, be your companions on the journey that we may work with you to be your church, your people, the bringers of your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Please be seated. Whoever you are, whatever you have done or failed to do, you are welcome at this table. This table is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who said, come to me. All of you who are tired and weary, all of you who are carrying heavy loads, come, come and receive all that I have to offer. All that I have to offer is symbolized in bread and in wine, for these are symbols of the love of Jesus Christ for each and every person. The Jesus who says, let me be your companion in life. This is his table, and all of you are invited and welcome. As always, we ask that you make note of the prayer concerns as they are printed in your bulletin. I do know as well that uh, Adrian Paprath is in um, Freighter Hospital and is hopefully coming home on Monday. So we hold her and the family in our prayers. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Holy and eternal God, in whose life is found our greatest joy and in whose service lies our greatest freedom. We've come before you once again, O oh God, to bless you and to offer our thanks and praise for the love that holds us fast and firm. And despite our frequent doubts and denials, refuses to let us go. We offer thanks and praise for the cloud of faithful witnesses on whose shoulders we stand here in this place, for the historical ministry of sanctuary this church once provided for those seeking freedom from enslavement and persecution, for the ministry of sanctuary still offered today to all seeking freedom from prisons of despair, enslavement to addiction, release from worry and burdens too big and too heavy for their shoulders, for those struggling to find courage to greet the day. We give thanks for the faithful witnesses of men and women who throughout the ages have lifted up your light to shine on dark places in this community. We have prayed for the struggles in the world and who have encouraged and ministered to one another here. So alongside of that cloud of witnesses, O oh God, we now pray for our world. For the flood tides of refugees, huddled masses, seeking sanctuary from war and violence and death, we pray that the leaders of the world may overcome political differences and ancient divisions and unite in common cause and concern to birth a new vision to establish peace and justice for men and women and children trapped in the horror and hopelessness of war and the desperation of flight and encountering the refusal of sanctuary. We pray for those in our midst who are in need of healing, physical and mental and spiritual. We pray that Christ's healing and hope may move through the hands and hearts and words of medical professionals and this family of faith as we surround them with prayer and loving embrace. 
and we pray especially for family members, spouses and children who fight the good fight day in and day out. Grant them patience and strength, grace and faith, and that peace the world can never give, that peace which is yours alone to bestow. As those who seek to walk in the footsteps of Christ, O oh God, may your spirit plant deeply in us the understanding that our freedom is dependent on serving you and that our most blessed service is in helping others move beyond the many causes of blindness and to see within themselves the Imago Dei. Remind us, fiercely loving God, of the responsibility that comes with freedom, that our ultimate allegiance is not to country, to family, to church, to lifestyle, but to you alone. So help us commit our hearts to justice so freedom may be a reality from sea to shining sea. That the good we know in this country be blessed not just with brotherhood and sisterhood, but be extended with the removal of glass ceilings, with people no longer afraid to come out of the closet, that the widening gulf between have and have not be bridged, that the vet who stood in harm's way be honored not just with parades and speeches, but with policies that finance the treatment of his wounds and her wounds in body and mind and that provide security for their widow and orphans. Now, O oh God, with the cloud of witnesses who throughout the ages have come to your table, we pray these things in the name of the one who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Find us the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, and as he poured it out, he said, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood, my blood shed, that your sins might be forgiven. Drink from it, all of you, and when you do, remember me. Children of God, these are the gifts of God for you, children of God. Come and be refreshed and restored, renewed, forgiven, and assured that you are held within God's loving embrace. Come to this table. It is set for you.
Do not fear, my yoke is easy. Do not fear, my burdens lie. Do not fear, the path before you. Do not run from me in Take my yoke and leave your troubles. Take my yoke and come with me. Take my yoke, I am beside you. Take and learn humility. Let us join together in the prayer after communion. Let us pray. God, your grace, grace is never ending, and your love endures throughout our lives. With joyful hearts and refreshed spirits, we give thanks for this bread and wine, good for our souls. United as a family of faith, we pray that you would go with us into the future and give us continued strength for the journey that lies ahead. Amen.
Go forth into the world. Go forth rejoicing in your freedom. Go forth rejoicing in the knowledge that as you walk the path of life set before you, you walk with the one who says, come to me. All of you who are tired and weary, for that one promises to be your companion through all of life. And as you go, may the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and rest and remain with you, with those whom you love, and with all God's children everywhere, today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Would you greet one another in peace?